Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I'm going to recap one of the thriller mystery films from 2023, titled Locked In. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. In the opening scene, a nurse is trying to communicate with a patient using an alphabet board. It is evident that the latter cannot speak, and uses blinks to communicate with the nurse. After blinking at the letters M, U, and R, the nurse does not take long to figure out that someone has tried to murder her. Following this, we are taken to five weeks earlier. A doctor examines the same patient, Catherine, and explains that she has suffered a head trauma, and that her brain stem has been damaged so she is incapable of any movement. She has woken up just now after being in a coma for three days. As of now, she isn't able to blink or express any emotions, while we see a flashback of a speeding car trying to hit her in the woods. After the doctor leaves, the same nurse from earlier approaches Catherine. She introduces herself as Nikki, and promises to help her recover. She then asks her to try and move her left eye, but the latter is unable to do so. In the next scene, Nikki meets with Catherine's only relative, Lena, and explains that the poor woman is suffering from locked-in syndrome. This means that she cannot control her entire body, and her only means of communication is through blinking. However, in Catherine's case, her working eye has been injured, so she isn't able to move it right now. Hearing this, Lena becomes emotional, and inquires if Catherine will ever recover, to which Nikki replies that she will. As the two delve deeper into conversation, the nurse expresses her desire to know more about her patient. When Lena starts sharing her story, the movie goes into a flashback. She reveals that she has known Catherine her entire life. When she was just a kid, her mother passed away, and Catherine became her legal guardian. She started living with the family in the luxurious rolling manor. Back then, Catherine was rich, glamorous and famous, as she was a TV actress. Lena loved everything about her and idolized her a lot. However, that all changed when Catherine's husband suddenly passed away, and he cut her off from his will, and left everything to their son, Jamie. This strained their relationship as Catherine became increasingly envious. Lena narrates that she loved both of them equally, and wanted them to live as a family. In the flashback, we see that Lena had a very special bond with Jamie. One day, as they are playing in the garden, the boy suddenly experiences a seizure, so Lena quickly calls Catherine and they tend to the boy. By their conversation, we get to know that Jamie has been sick his entire life. This has left him very vulnerable and weak. That night, Catherine dresses up beautifully, and seems to be in a happy mood. When Lena asks where she's going, she reveals that she is meeting a director for a new TV role. Turns out she hasn't acted for nearly two years after her husband's death. Lena wishes her good luck, and then closes the door. Following this, the two kids watch movies, and have a wonderful time. They bond over the shared fact that their biological parents are no more. It is revealed that Jamie's mother passed away when he was an infant, and his father then got married to the actress, Catherine. But it is evident he doesn't like his stepmom at all. Hearing his concerns, Lena promises to protect him, and always be by his side. Back in the present, Nikki and Lena are still talking. The nurse appears to be very curious by nature, and she tries to get more details about her patient. She mentions that everyone is saying Catherine was run over by a vehicle, which was driven by an unknown person, but Lena isn't too sure about it. Nikki then asks if Catherine is her legal guardian or mother-in-law. In response, Lena says it's complicated, and starts narrating the rest of the story. The movie then cuts to three years in the past, where Lena and Jamie are surprisingly getting married. Their emotional bond has blossomed into a romantic relationship. Everyone seems to be happy for them, except Catherine. She believes that Lena is a gold digger, who is doing all this to inherit Jamie's property. She doesn't say it out loud, but her sarcastic remarks surely imply that. Later, during the dance ceremony, Jamie suffers a massive seizure, which interrupts the celebrations. When Lena fails to calm him down, the family doctor, Mr. Lawrence, carries him to his bedroom. It is revealed that Lawrence is a general practitioner, who only has limited knowledge regarding chronic illnesses. But as he is very close to the family, he has become Jamie's personal physician. In the present, the nurse asks Lena if she remembers her. 
When the latter acts confused, Nikki reveals that she had taken care of a sick Jamie a few months ago. Back to the past, the relationship between Lynn and Catherine continues to worsen. They barely look eye to eye because of their resentment for each other. Jamie also doesn't fare any better, as his health is deteriorating by the day. To add to his problems, he has now become addicted to painkillers. Lena requests him to stop taking those, but he refuses. That evening, Lena decides to swim in a nearby lake to clear her mind. Along the way, she meets Lawrence, who creepily hits on her, and asks her to get out more. Upon hearing this, she says she can't do so because of her sick husband. Lena then dives inside the pond, and relaxes in the freezing water. But in the midst of it, she hears some bells tolling, which alarms her. Turns out Jamie rings them whenever he is in trouble. Lena rushes back to the manor, only to find him in an unconscious state, as the poor guy has suffered from yet another seizure. In the next scene, Lena takes her husband to the hospital, and Nikki is assigned to take care of him. When the nurse comes across Lawrence, she asks if he was the one who prescribed Jamie those painkillers. She asserts that the dosage is very high for a weak patient like him. In response, Lawrence takes her outside the room, and shouts at her for questioning his standards. From this moment onwards, Nikki starts seeing him as a red flag. That evening, Lena meets Lawrence in private, and expresses her disappointment at the current situation. Although she loves Jamie a lot, she is slowly getting tired of caring for him. She thinks that he doesn't want to be cured, as he never listens to her. In response, the doctor once again asks her to get out and have some fun, he suggests that she take a short holiday. That night, Lena sees Lawrence in her dream. They are swimming together in the pond, and are about to kiss. When she suddenly jolts awake, she realizes that she is falling for him. She then writes some notes in her personal diary before going back to sleep. As the days go by, Lena starts getting closer to Lawrence. She has regular meetups with him, where they do different activities like playing tennis, drinking wine, and so on. However, at home, she always remains sad and depressed. Lena's relationship with Catherine is at an all-time low, and Jamie is now having to use a respirator at night. He is getting weaker by the day. One rainy night, when Lena cannot take it any longer, she ends up having intercourse with Dr. Lawrence in a barn. She lets out all her frustration by making passionate love with him. Cut to a few days later, it's Catherine's birthday, so the family decides to have a small celebration. Dr. Lawrence is also invited, and Lena plays a wonderful song on the piano for her mother-in-law. They also cut a cake to make her feel special. However, just when everything seems to be going well, Catherine starts letting out her frustrations. She begins talking about Lena's deceased mom, claiming that the woman was jealous of her accomplishments. Lena claims that her mom wasn't a jealous person, and says her mother was a million times the woman Catherine will ever be. In response, Catherine says she was the one who insisted on becoming her legal guardian, and Lena would have ended up in a foster home if she hadn't. Hearing this, Lena becomes enraged, prompting her to leave the table. But before she walks away, she tells Catherine that this manor now belongs to her and Jamie. That night, Lena and Jamie get into an argument. She expresses her frustration at how her life has panned out, she can't even leave the house as she has to take care of him. In his defense, Jamie claims that she would be nothing without him. He even reminds Lena about how her mother died several years ago. Unfortunately, this only enrages her, and her love for him starts to diminish. The next morning, Lena meets with her new lover Lawrence. After she tells Robert that she would like to leave Jamie to be with him, he refuses, stating that Catherine would ruin his reputation. But once Lena tells him she is willing to do whatever it takes to be with him, Robert relents, but he warns her they have to be brave. Lena asserts she'll do anything, and they have another intercourse, while we see poor Jamie is left alone in his room. In the next scene, Lawrence prescribes Jamie with some new medications, which temporarily alleviates his pain. He then brings him to the pond, and by boat, he will take him to the somewhere nice with the intent of having a picnic. Lena is concerned for her husband's well-being, as Jamie isn't strong enough to swim, but Jamie reassures her that he will be fine. Jamie also apologizes for what he said, and the three hop on the boat, and Lawrence begins rowing. Moments later, Lawrence says he will take them to a small island in the middle of the pond. However, when they arrive at that specific location, he still doesn't stop, and Lena starts to feel worried. 
Jamie becomes worried, and asks where they are going, and when they arrive on the other side of the small island, Lawrence greets the workers who are cutting down trees. But then suddenly, Lawrence throws one of his oars into the water. And when he tries to retrieve it, he deliberately capsizes the boat. Lena grabs Jamie and tries to save him, but then, Lawrence drags poor Jamie underwater and drowns him, making it look like an accident. Lena watches her husband die right in front of her eyes, but she can't do anything to save him. She is shattered and heartbroken, as Jamie was her first love. In the aftermath of the incident, the police arrive at the scene. Lawrence gives them a fake story, but Lena is too scared to reveal the truth. She fears that she will also be held accountable for her husband's death. As for Catherine, she hysterically cries at the edge of the pond. Although she hated Jamie at times, he was still her son and she loved him. Back in the present, as Nikki hears the story, she starts becoming suspicious. She thinks that Jamie didn't drown accidentally, he was killed. She asks Lena why she allowed the boat trip, but the latter asserts that it was his own plan. Then, out of the blue, Nikki inquires since how long she has been dating Lawrence, and she mentions that she has seen them together many times. When Lena struggles to come up with an answer, the nurse suspects that they killed Jamie to remove him from their way. Lena desperately claims that it was just an accident, but Nikki is sure that there is more to the story. Following this, we are once again taken to the past. After her husband's death, Lena has started having nightmares. She sees the entire room around her drowning in water. When she becomes restless, Lawrence comes into her room, and makes love to her. Even after all that has happened, she still trusts him. The following evening, the two meet in his car to discuss their next move. Lena is desperate to leave this place once and for all, and she wants to start a new life with him. Lawrence agrees, but for that, he wants her to sell the house. He believes that if she does so, they will have enough money to start afresh. However, Lena, who still considers Catherine her mother, refuses to do so, she mentions that she made a promise to never sell the rolling manor. Lena then tries to exit the car, but Lawrence stops her. He forcefully drags her inside, and brings out her diary. Lawrence claims that Jamie's death is well documented here, so if she tries to betray him, he will expose her to the authorities. After this, he finally lets her run away. In the next scene, when Lena arrives home, she comes across a shocking sight. Lawrence is getting intimate with her mother-in-law, Catherine. This breaks her heart, and she starts crying uncontrollably. She finally realizes that Lawrence didn't love her, he was always after her wealth. After a while, he approaches her and tries to explain, but she is having none of it. When she tries to get away, he once again becomes aggressive, and pushes her to the ground. Fortunately, Lena somehow manages to escape. She quickly goes to her room, and boards the door. Lawrence and Catherine arrive shortly after, and try to break in. This reveals that they are now working together, and they want to kill Lena to have the entire wealth for themselves. However, our girl is not going to give up so easily. She enters a store within the room, and cleverly tricks Lawrence. She stabs his hand with a fork. Following this, she gets out of the house, and is able to escape into the woods. Catherine grabs a gun, and chases after her on a horse. Soon after, Lawrence also breaks free, and begins looking for her in his car. After a bit of chasing, they eventually corner her in an open field. Catherine points her gun at Lena and shoots, after which the screen goes black. The movie then cuts to the present, where Nikki pleads with Lena to confess everything, right when they get the news that Catherine has started blinking. This means that she can finally communicate. Nikki quickly approaches her with the alphabet board and uses it, and it is here that Catherine spells the word murder. Meanwhile, Lena watches this from afar with a concerned look on her face. Surprisingly, she later meets with Lawrence, and tells him about the situation. This worries him, so the two comes up with yet another devious plan. Lena says that they should take Catherine home, and finish her off before she divulges any more information. Lena knows that it is a risky move, but she doesn't have a better plan. Following this, 
the two sneak inside the hospital, put Catherine in a wheelchair, and take her away. By the time Nikki arrives, it's already too late, she doesn't see Catherine, and witnesses the three of them leave in their car. As soon as they reach home, Lawrence begins working on a drug. He plans to inject it to Catherine to kill her, and she has a lot of medication in her bloodstream all ready to cover their tracks. They will make her death look like an accident, Lawrence discharged her, Lena brought her home, and Catherine died in her sleep. While he is busy with the drug, Lena receives a text from the nurse. She drops a major bombshell, Catherine didn't want to kill her, she actually saved her on that fateful night. Now, Lena is torn apart on what to do, and whom to trust. She then decides to find out the truth herself, and sends Lawrence out on an errand. While he's away, she approaches Catherine, and inquires if she really saved her that night. The mom-in-law confirms this by blinking. We are then taken to one final flashback. That night, while Lena was running for her life, Lawrence was after her in his car, determined to kill her. When Catherine noticed this, she had a sudden change of heart, so she decided to help her daughter. She took aim with her gun, and shot Lawrence's car tire, which brought him to a halt. With this distraction, Lena managed to get away. But unfortunately, when Catherine tried to run away, she tripped and fell on the road. Robert saw Catherine on the road, and stopped the car to speak with her. She told him to let Lena go, and threatened that if he harms her, she will go public with the truth. It is at this point that Lawrence took revenge on Catherine by running her over instead. In the present, Lena is now determined to save her mother-in-law, she hides a knife behind her, ready to use it at an opportune moment. When Lawrence returns, he prepares to inject Catherine with the drug. But Lena steps forward, and says that she wants to do it herself. He obliges, and gives her the injection. Lena then pretends to start the procedure, and once he is distracted, she injects him with a needle instead. This unfortunately doesn't kill Lawrence as the dose is too little for him. He thwarts her away, and proceeds to finish off Catherine. But in the last second, Lena gets up, and stabs him with a knife, finally killing him. In the aftermath of this incident, the police arrive at the scene. As they are loading the corpse away, Lena, Catherine, and Nikki watch them from a distance. Lena asks if the nurse will reveal their secret, but the latter doesn't respond. The movie ends as the mother and daughter finally hold hands after a long time. Okay guys, that's all the recap of Locked In 2023. Thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.